crush. Call it crush. Today is Tuesday, August 12, 2014. Time is 10 a.m. It's my pleasure to call the order of the State of Tennessee, Department of Commerce and Insurance, Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers. Ms. Lisa Mosley, will you please call the roll? Robert Helms. Here. Wayne Hinkle. Here. David Neal. Here. W.T. Patterson. Jane Gray Sal. Here. Robert Starkey. Here. Anita Taylor. Here. Mr. President, six of the seven members are here, present. Thank you, we'll continue meeting as planned. Uh, we'll now adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Have a motion from Mr. Hinkle, second from Mr. Neal, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Meeting will proceed. Uh, our next order of business will be to review and approve the minutes from the May 6th, 214 meeting, the uh, July meeting is still not available at this time. Well, I move to adopt. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Sal, a second from Ms. Taylor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. The next uh, will be a legal report from Ellery Richardson, our Assistant General Counsel. All right. um, one note first. Under the first case there's an issue of uh, two lines there that is inapplicable i just forgot to take that off from last month you need a motion for that um, no just if you'll ignore the first two lines of that case because that is not related to this case all right so the first case is case number two zero one four zero zero nine six seven one and to other locations, 2014-009672 and 2014-009673. On December 4th, 2013, an inspector with the board conducted an inspection of the respondent establishments. All three of the establishment licenses expired on September 30th, 2013 and were not renewed until October 21st, 2013. During this time, respondent number one handled seven cases. Respondent number two and three did not handle any cases. Response. Respondent admits that their licenses expired on September 30th and were not renewed until October 21st. This was an oversight and not done with any ill intent. My recommendation would be for respondent number one, a consent order with a civil penalty of $350 in authorization for a hearing, and for respondent number two and number three to close with a letter of warning. Move to adopt the recommendation. Second. I have a <coughs> motion from Ms. Sal, a second from Ms. Taylor. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Four and five, or respondents four and five, case numbers 2014011182 and 2014011181. On January 13, 2014, an inspector with the funeral board conducted an inspection of the respondent establishment. The funeral director's license expired on December 31, 2013 and was not renewed at the time of inspection. During this time, the funeral director handled three cases. Respondent did not renew because she overlooked completing her continuing education due to family and health issues. As the deadline approached, she contacted the office to inform them that she might not have them completed in time, but she did not realize her license would not be renewed if she missed this deadline. 
After the inspector came and informed, in, and informed her that her license was expired, the funeral director quickly finished all the courses and mailed the late fees. So my recommendation would be for respondent number four, consent order with $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. And for respondent number five, consent order with $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. I have a motion for Mr. Hams, a second from Mr. Hinkle. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Or two zero one four zero one one zero three one and two zero one four zero one one zero three two. On December on December sixteenth, two thousand thirteen, an inspector with the funeral board conducted an inspection of the respondent establishment. The manager's funeral director license expired on <coughs> excuse me October thirty first, two thousand thirteen, and was not renewed until December fifth, two thousand thirteen. During this time, the funeral director handled five cases. Respondent funeral director apologizes for the oversight. He says that he is a high school football coach. He was not in the office full time during the football season, so we overlooked the renewal date until he returned full time in December. My recommendation would be for respondent number six, consent order with $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. And respondent number seven, consent order with $250 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. Accept council's recommendation. Second. I have a motion. It looks like that here, his funeral director in the bombing is not his priority because he got an expired license with a thousand dollar penalty before. Who, who is in he charge? Had a license, had to have a license to coach football. I bet that'd be paid. Excuse the funeral director, when he's handling the high school football coaching. Manager, but I'm not sure, but I would assume there are other funeral directors at the establishment, but I'm not positive. I'm not familiar with this. Motion to accept council's recommendation. I have a motion from Ms. Taylor. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. And a second. From Mr. Hinkle. Thank you. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. This next one has four respondents, so hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. Um, this is case number 2014001 or 011591, 2014011592, 2014011593, and 2014011. On May 7th, complainant, who is a medical examiner, released remains and signed a death certificate to a representative of respondent number eight establishment. On May 30th, complainant's office received a copy of the death certificate from Tennessee's vital records office that respondent number nine funeral director filed. It was apparent that this was not the same death certificate complainant signed and gave to the establishment. Complainant believes that the death certificate was falsified. Respondent crematory number 10 took the deceased from the medical examiner's office, embalmed the body, and then gave it to respondent number 8 establishment. Respondent number 11, embalmer for respondent crematory number 8, received the deceased on May 9th, embalmed the deceased, and forwarded the body and the original death certificate to respondent number 8 establishment. Respondent number 11, embalmer, states that she did not prepare the death certificate. Funeral Director respondent number nine states that after he received the body from the crematory, that is not a complete sentence, I apologize for that. While typing information into his portion of the death certificate, he accidentally damaged the death certificate. He typed a new death certificate and transferred the information from the original. The death certificate was then filed according to standard procedure. My recommendation would be for respondent establishment number eight a consent order with $500 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. For respondent number nine, funeral director, consent order with $1,000 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. And to dismiss the cases against respondent number 10 and number 11. Mr. President, I don't need to recuse myself from this vote. Yeah, medical examiner's signature forged. 
It appears that way, yes. <coughs> Is that not a felony? I'm just looking at it in regards to our laws, not felonies. Motion to accept council's recommendation. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Hinkle and a second from Mr. Neal. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. No. I have one no. Would you, uh, Ms. Mosley, would you call the roll? Please. Robert Helms. I oh, recuse. Sorry. Wayne Hinkle. Yes. David Neal. Yes. Jan Gray Sal. No. Robert Starkey. Yes. Anita Taylor. Yes. Mr. President, we have four yes and one no. Motion carries. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a <coughs> yes. question? That carried, I can't do anything. But every any consideration of this person's license being suspended or revoked for having forged a signature of a Evan in the past. What? Evan in the past. For We've forging a name? We've had it before to come before the board. Uh, my recommendation was for the maximum civil penalty, but we okay. decided not so to. That's the maximum. Next case is case number 20140101571. On April 21st, 2014, an inspector with the funeral board conducted an inspection of the respondent establishment. Respondent arranged for embalming of decedents at the establishment without obtaining a copy of the embalmer's current license. The license they had expired on November 30th, 2013. During this period, the embalmer is listed on eight death certificates. In respondent's general price list, respondent lists direct cremation as the same price as another cremation pass package. This contradicts the pricing structure on the price list. Response, respondent received the embalmer's current license by the end of the inspection. The embalmer has an active license. Additionally, respondent had previously asked the embalmer for his current license. The embalmer had not received it in the mail at that time, but assured the respondent that his license was renewed. The funeral rule requirement of offering a direct cremation is met in their price list. In their package, minimum, minimum creation done properly, respondent chooses to not charge an additional fee for washing and disinfecting. Respondent in believes in holding themselves to a higher standard and does not believe this is a violation of the funeral rule. My recommendation would be to close the complaint with a letter of warning for not having a copy of the embalmer's current license. The problem is wording, is that correct, about the What was your question? They provided the washing and disinfecting, but just didn't put it on. Yes, and the inspector noted it because two different packages had the same price. But upon <coughs> my further review, it doesn't appear to be a violation. I can. I have a motion from Ms. Sal, a second from Ms. Taylor. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Next case is case number 
On May 1, 2014, an inspector with the funeral board conducted an inspection of the respondent establishment. For one contract, the purchaser was charged $200 more than what is listed for the casket selected on the general price list. Two of the four caskets on display are $200 more than what is listed on the general price list. Um, three examined statement of funeral goods and services selected did not have a reason for embalming listed. Respondent's website is not clear that two of their staff are not licensed as funeral directors or embalmers, and there was no response. So my recommendation would be a consent order with a civil penalty of $1,000, an authorization for a hearing, which would be $750 civil penalty for the violations plus a $250 penalty for not responding to the complaint. Motion to accept council recommendation. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Hinkle. A second from Mr. Neal. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Case number 2014011541 and 2014011542. Senior partner of the funeral home files a complaint against his managing partner. Managing partner, respondent number 14 told the Office of the Medical Examiner, staff members of several medical facilities, cemetery staff members, families, and others who call asking for complainant that he no longer works at the funeral home but is with a different establishment. When complainant came to pick up his mail, he saw that the sign of the funeral home had changed to remove his name. This na the name has not legally been changed and complainant still owns a third interest in the establishment. Complainant attached obituaries showing that the name in the newspaper is the changed name and not the legal name. Respondent states that he sent a letter to the board explaining the decision of the two-thirds controlling partners to remove complainant from the firm. Respondent states that he still uses the full name of the funeral home and attaches documents showing so. He gave the newspaper notice to the phone and the newspaper made the mistake. Complainant is always notified when a client requests his service. Complainant has shown no interest in being connected to the firm, either physically or monetarily. And as of July 23rd, the sign in front of the funeral home has the senior partner's name taken off. So my recommendation for the respondent funeral director would be a consent order with $250 civil penalty, an authorization for a hearing, and respondent establishment a consent order with $500 civil penalty and authorization for a hearing. did not voluntarily leave the firm. It appears so. Changed somebody else. They've changed the name of the establishment without changing it with us, which is a violation. They have to have them. a new establishment license if they change. They would them. have to apply for a change name. But they haven't done so. No. Nope. Second. <clears throat> I have a motion from Mr. Ham, second from Mr. Hinkle. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next case is case number 2014014651 and case 2014014652. Complainant's sister died on Memorial Day, May 26th. The body was originally taken to respondent number 16's establishment for transport to the University of Tennessee's body farm, but the body farm rejected the body because it wasn't going to get there fast enough. Therefore, the family wanted to use another establishment. Complainant says that respondent number 16 was angry that the other establishment has a lower price by $1,000. The transporter from respondent number 17's establishment and respondent number 16 demanded $1,000 in transportation costs before they moved the deceased. Complainant claims that both respondents took $435 out of the deceased's bank account. 
They made the complainant sign some papers and said they would give the money back, but they kept the money and split it among themselves. Respondent number 16 was very disrespectful and unprofessional. When they came to take the body, respondent number 16 maybe made them wait through two funerals. Complainant is upset about the illegal conspiring to take the money out of the deceased's account. Response. Respondent states that the county coroner contacted him about the deceased. The deceased was a registered donor with the University of Tennessee Body Farm, and respondent agreed to take the body for transport to the body farm the next day. He agreed to do this for no cost. Respondent states that he spoke with the complainant about this arrangement. He then spoke with respondent number 17 about transporting the deceased. Respondent number 17 told him that she spoke with the complainant and they all agreed on a $1,000 price for the transportation. Respondent number 16 again spoke with the complainant to confirm the agreement. Complainant told him that the money was in a bank account in the deceased's name. Respondent told complainant to contact him if she had any problems getting the money out of the account, since the deceased was the only name on the account. Complainant called on Tuesday morning, stating that the bank wouldn't release the money. Respondent then called the bank and spoke with the CEO. The bank agreed to release the money to the funeral home to pay for funeral and burial expenses, but it wouldn't release it to the family because they weren't on the signature card. The bank wrote the check to respondent establishment and the family thanked him for his help. Once all the transportation to the body of farm was scheduled, confirmed, and about to take place, complainant arrived at the respondent's establishment Tuesday morning and told them that the family decided to have the body cremated by another funeral home. Respondent number 17 had already traveled to the town and was about to take the body. Respondent number 17 charged respondent number 16 275 out of the thousand dollars originally agreed to for coming and making the arrangements. Respondent establishment explained to the complainant that they had a verbal contract and showing up the last minute to cancel it without warning was unacceptable since a lot of work had already taken place. Regardless, res respondent refunded all of the money except the 275 that went to respondent number 17. Respondent st states that the body farm was ready to accept the deceased and had no knowledge of the change of plans. Complainant statements about the body farm rejecting the body was false. In fact, a hospice nurse called the respondent to ensure that, th that the deceased went to the body farm because the deceased had been adamant to the nurse that she wanted her body donated. Respondent dies being disrespectful. There were two funerals scheduled, but since there was no advance notice when complainant showed up, it was unavoidable that she would have to wait. Respondent did the best he could to coordinate with the other funeral home for transport. Respondent states that he never discussed his cremation prices with, the, with complainant, but a comparison of price list shows that his is less expensive than the establishment complainant used. Respondent states that all of this confusion could have been avoided if complainant had communicated with both respondents. Respondent number 17 states that everyone agreed to the $1,000 price and the body farm was waiting to accept the body. Complainant knew that he would be taking the deceased to the body farm between 9 and 10 a.m. Complainant arrived a little before 10 a.m. to change the plans. Complainant would not have had to pay anything for him if he did not have to drive to the town. She should have communicated earlier that the plans had changed. My recommendation would be to compose would be to close the complaint against both respondents. Motion to accept council's recommendation. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Taylor, a second from Mr. Neal. Any opposed? All in favor. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries. This is case number two zero one four zero one four eight seven one two zero one four zero one. Four eight seven two, and two zero one four zero one four eight seven three. Complainant states that it took respondent a month to release the funds from his mother's pre-funeral contract. Complainants met with respondent for questions about their own pre-funeral contracts. They came to the funeral home twice, but respondent is out. They made arrangements a third time to come on a Saturday morning, but the funeral home's doors were locked. After knocking, respondent funeral director came to the door not fully dressed. Both parties were upset, so complainants left. They came another day the next week and were still unable to meet with the respondent. Complainants are confused and unhappy and would like their pre-need contracts transferred to another funeral home. Response. For the mother's contract, respondent states that a month is less than, less than the average time of a policy payout. Complainants are upset they couldn't get the money immediately. Respondent states that he has explained to the complainants that the pre-need contracts are irrevocable. It can be transferred to any funeral home they wish after the named person is dead. The complainants do not like that answer. Respondent states that the complainants never made any appointments to come and come unannounced demanding answers they want to hear and harassing his staff. As to the Saturday meeting, 
The complainants came unannounced and the funeral home was closed and the closed sign was posted. Respondent does not make appointments on weekends unless there is an at-need situation. He was staying at the funeral home, taking care of his mother, who has since passed away. He woke to their incessant knocking. He was dressed, but not in his usual professional attire. Respondent has explained that their money is in a trust with First Tennessee Bank and that it is irrevocable, irrevocable until the time of passing when it can be transferred to any funeral home they choose. So my recommendation would be to close the complaint. Motion to accept council's recommendation. Second. Have a motion from Mr. Hinkle and a second from Mr. Helms. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Final case is case number 2014-016781 and 2014-016782. Member of the public submitted a news report concerning respondent. The news reports state that respondent was arrested for a second DUI. Respondent pled guilty to first offense driving under the influence on July 24, 2014. Response. Respondent was admitted to an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center on July 11th. The center is voluntary and was not mandated by any court. Respondent's case manager states that clients general, generally stay in the center for about 21 days, but they have the opportunity to stay for longer if they wish. My recommendation would be to close with a letter of warning. Motion to accept council's recommendation. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Hinkle and a second from Ms. Taylor. Yes. Okay. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That is the end of my report. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Uh, we'll next proceed to administrative matters with Robert Gribble, our executive director. The first report is the Lysony report. It's a report of license administratively approved by the executive director pursuant to the board authority for the period of July 8, 2014, August 10, 2014. Uh, two establishments, one new establishment, which actually the board approved at the last meeting subject to them supplying some additional documentation. They supplied that within just a few days. So we approved that. And the other one's just a change of location just down the street, uh, actually just building or two in the town where it is. And then there's a list of the individuals. Director and Embalmer are licensed um, for those individuals that are listed there. Those establishment report, there's uh, one establishment that is reported closing since the last board meeting. That's Moshine Chapel of Dowdy Stevens Funeral Home at 230 Main Street in Moshine. It's a smaller establishment that's outside their main establishment in Greenville, Tennessee. Very action report. This is a report of consent orders administratively accepted or approved by the executive director pursuant to board authority for the period of July the 1st, 2014 through July 31, 2014. Those uh, cases are listed, the violation and the civil penalty are what the violation. Those are listed for you there. Thank you. Excuse me. These are the people that have paid their fees, the yes. violation. And the consent order, they've paid the civil penalty, and the case is now closed. Well, I haven't sent out the consent orders yet because those needed to be authorized by the board. The staff did contact them, which is why they have a response listed, response to the allegations. So based on the board's recommendations, I would send a consent order to offer to settle the case. And if they accept it and pay, then the case is closed. And, oh, on and that's what's on the report. Right. Mm -hmm. But now we've got all these others that you have not had, that are not settled. The ones I just listed on my complaint review are not are still open. Cases that are open is a complaint report that will show you. Oh, down here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's fine. To that that's fine. I beg your pardon. These are the ones that are still open. 
There are seven funeral director and or embalmer cases and 53 establishment cases, which makes a total of 60 complaints. I'd like to answer any questions you have. If there are no questions, then Mr. President, that concludes my report. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is approval of license applications. Oops, excuse me. I need to make a motion to it. Oh, pardon. <clears throat> motion to accept Mr. Grebel's reports. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Hinkle, a second from Mr. Neal and Ms. Taylor. So, any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next on our agenda will be approval of license applications. Individuals are listed first. Mr. Tuck, if you would, please come up to the, to the table there. The first applicant is Matthew Gregory Tuck of Lafette, Tennessee. His application is for a funeral director and embalmer license. He's before you today for your consideration of TCA 62-5-317 and what other and any other um, statute or rules that might be applicable to the situation. Mr. Tuck, while they look at your record, would you want to give an introduction of yourself, identify yourself for the record, and whatever opening statement you might want to make to the board? My name is Matthew Tuck. Uh, I'm born and raised in Lafayette, Tennessee, and have been working in Alexander Funeral Home in Lafayette for two years. Uh, started out just helping with nighttime visitation, washing cars, and decided to go to Guptons to get my funeral directing uh, and embalming license and completed in December and would just like your consideration for my Item number two, you're here because you item number two about a misdemeanor traffic violation. Yes, ma'am. Good, good on your scores. Yes, sir. I received the Dodge Award for Excellence in the Art of Embalming from John A. Gupton. So this was before you um, started working at the funeral home? Yes, This incident happened. Yes. Okay. Motion to approve uh, application for funeral director's license. Second. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Hinkle, a second from Ms. Sal and Anita Taylor. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Tuck. Thank you. Be careful. <laughs> Next applicant for you today is Mr. Larry Russell Dawson. Mr. Dawson, if you would come up and have a seat at the table, please. Mr. Dawson is from Antioch, Tennessee. He's making a reapplication for a funeral director and embalmer license. <coughs> and for consideration today would be TCA 62-5-305B3, 62-5-306, and 62-5-317. That you to rules that you might deem applicable to the situation. Mr. Dawson, if you would identify yourself for the record and make whatever opening statement you'd want to make to the board. I'm Larry Russell Dawson. <coughs> um, I've been a licensed penal director in, uh, for the state of Tennessee and in Barmer uh, since uh, 1972. Uh, at that time, Ed Hooper was the uh, um, executive over the uh, board. Uh, have been licensed um, as a film director, well, before I become a film director, I served in the United States Army in 1969 to 71 in grave registration where I did receive a meritorial service award for at that period of time which I almost consisted in over 2,000 remains during the Vietnam War. 
uh, after receiving my license, I did open an well, establishment in Franklin, Tennessee, and uh, what have remained licensed as a film director up until around 2004. Had some problems where I did not get my license um, actually renewed at that time in 2004. I'm also a minister, okay? And during that period of time, after I did not get my license renewed, I was, um, as you said, being tested by God, I'm a minister. And so as my faith was tested, it kind of led to some other problems. So when I did come back to the board, I had a few problems with my, um, uh, get my license renewed because of my test, but nothing as far as my record will show that I violated any laws as far as uh, a film director. I've always tried to uh, do all my work and, and do this in a professional manner as a film director and try to stay in good standard with the board. <clears throat> Why, why have you not reapplied since 2004? It's been 10 years. What's well, I, I have. I don't know if it's showing your record or not. This is the third time that I've come before the board. And so um, each time I'm taking the law exam and I have passed it. Um, but as I say again, um, it's been a process that I've had to go through. I think the last time probably was, was it Looking at a letter uh, from Mr. Gribble, it's dated September the 15th, 2009, uh, that informs you that your uh, application, again for license, funeral director, was denied. The board's decision was based upon applicants lack of good moral character as required by the Tennessee Undated Code. Can you tell me anything about that? Well, uh, I'll say again, as me being a minister, all right, and I think really in the situation that I was put in at that time, um, I really don't think many people understood my situation that I was in. And in the time that a minister is being led by God, uh, and he gives you a direct command uh, to do something, it's left up to you to do it or to not to do it. And so uh, based upon the decision that I had to make, of course, back, it was in, this will go back into 2009, uh, from talking to Mr. Gribble and Gussie uh, and the board, they, they pointed out moral character uh, was the thing that kept me from getting my license renewed at that time. Was well, nothing else that had to be done? I mean, as far as um, my duties are performed as a film director. So I accepted what the board said and just, you know, went on at that time. But again, the time has passed. And of course, I think I've shown good moral character uh, as far as an individual and a minister. And of course, uh, down through the years, it hasn't made me a, a bad person, but it made me more stronger than anything because, number one, when a man is obedient unto God, it never takes nothing away from you, but it always adds to you. And this being a test that I had to go through at that time was a, put me on the spot. But either at that time I had to make a decision, either I was going to do it or not do it. So uh, anytime you want to be faithful in serving God, and, and even if it sometimes it puts us on the spot that we'll have to give up some things. But in the long run, it always pays off because we were obedient. And regardless of what the circumstances are, we, yeah, we're going to go through persecution because Christ had to go through it too, being God's son. But then he Eric, came. Excuse me, let me interrupt you here just mm -hmm. a minute. 
Ja. Quoted it here as saying that it was the word of God telling you to write these harassing letters to this 15 year old girl. No, not, not what this says. Okay, well, I'm. And you said it was the word of God. And what, well, the state called it harassment. And of course, at that time, like I said again, I'm there too again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be addressed. Uh, several different ways about this, but as I say again, I think again, the situation that I was in, um, I just really don't think people saw it the way that I was in. They just looked at it on the outside, and, and God does not look. Driving a school bus, this girl rode the bus. She was, yes ma'am, she was in school at the time. That was in 2001. And so the thing about it is, I have not denied anything that happened at that time, because I stood by my conviction. But again, me being a minister and of course that was my test because without her I would not have had a test see so the the, the thing is that sometimes we can't choose what our test is God tells us what our test is going to be and he just left us to do it or, or not to do it and so me being obedient I had to suffer the consequences that come with it He was arrested in Franklin, Tennessee for this. Williamson County, is that correct? Why was you arrested in Lawrence County for? Uh, that was, I was arrested. When, when did this show I was arrested in Lawrence County? APS warrant. Did you it, write fraudulent checks? Yeah, that was that was back at a time and we'll see. That was when I was in business back I think what it was about seventy. Back in the 70s? 87? Yeah, something like that. Of course, at that time, I had I had buried a lot of people <coughs> and had some people that um, did not pay. And of course, at that time, I had some that checks were not good, my checks were bouncing, and so it just put me in a bad situation. Of course, I learned from that because Judge Frank told me in Franklin, and a lot of people in, in Williamson County know that I bend over backwards to help anybody, especially the poor, but at the same time, it doesn't paint a good picture as towards my business associates of uh, being a good sound businessman when you have your chicks <laughs> bouncing on you. And so um, I, I, that was one of my situations that happened to me there. Have you had contact with this young lady? Well, she's grown now. I have not. I have not. That's been, uh, like I said, back in 2000, what was it, 2001, uh, 2002. <clears throat> I haven't had any any problems since then, since this time? No, ma'am, I have not. And like I said, it just made me a lot stronger. I, I guess my attitude towards life is much better because um, as I've t talked with uh, even people in Williamson County and even as far as um, uh, the judges and district attorneys, and Larry, they all told me, said, you know, you might think people are talking bad about you. He said, but everything we hear is good. So there's always a chance that you come back, but the main thing again is just, you know, do right. That's that's the key. What have you been doing? What's been your employment since this time? Since well, you were fired as the bus driver? Uh, since then, right now, I'm retired. Um, doing disability, uh, not disability, I'm sorry, my early retirement. You're not under disability? I'm not disability, I'm early retirement. Did you apply for disability? No, ma'am. Uh, retirement. I said, I don't know if I said disability, but retirement is what I'm doing right now. Um, I did work at the uh, car lot as a car salesman from about 2005 up until around 2009. Actually, it was 2003 up until 2009 and worked for, I worked with Kia, auto sales. So I sold cars for about eight years. So I had a lot of contact with the public and um, then also worked for a couple of hotels as security. Well, it's just like everything that you have to work at it. 
Right. Worked as security. I did work as security, yes. So, well, actually, they didn't, hotel and life course to use the word security because we didn't carry a security license. So we would more or less, they used the title of valet, but the valet had to go through the hotel and make sure that the, the guests were secured, yes, sir. He did not guilty for reason of insanity, is that correct? I did not, I, well, that's what they said, you know, I did not, I said not guilty, but, you know, that's what came out on it, but uh, that's what it was at the time. <clears throat> if you were to have a license, what do you plan to do? Well, I, I have several offers right now offered to me to come and work for several funeral homes, and so that is something that I do want to do is get back into the funeral. They know about all this? <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I've got letters. Uh, had the funeral homes to give me letters even doing this. I've had a lot of funeral You submit those for this. Well, th there should be a record of every funeral director that have given me a letter, and uh, they should be on file here at the state board. I've had a lot of funeral directors that do it with me, and so uh, it means a lot having support at a time that you are when you're going in trouble, you know, and, and going through because, like I said, trouble doesn't last always, but it's just supposed to make us stronger as we go through, and once we come out, then we can look back and, and we, we know that that's not the path to take, you know, so we, we try to do better as we move forward. Oh, there are a couple letters in the application. Mr. Chairman, I asked to be recused from this vote. <clears throat> we included your letter this time from Miss Judith Mooney Hill, Hill right. and also from Mr. Henry L. Smith. They, those were with this application. We also included your letter that you wrote to the board and we received on July the 21st of that information. <clears throat> and there are probably some, like you say, there, there are other letters that go back to the other applications, right. but we didn't include all the information from those, but I, I'll be glad to share Right. I'd be yeah, glad I'll, to share with the board if you if there's something you wanted to see. Well, that's fine. Like I said, I've, just, I've had a lot of film directors to stand behind me and encourage me, you know, say with the skills that I have and the talent, not to give up because I'm almost, I'm, I will be 65 years old this <coughs> year, and hopefully life lasts that I'll be able to still give a few more years of service in uh, this area before, you know, while I'm still living. I guess my thought is, um, seeing how a lot of time has passed, several years have passed, and you haven't had any other problems, um, I would be entitled to vote to grant your license back to you, but if it ever came up again, which we hope that it wouldn't, um, I just believe in second chances if you've learned your lesson. Is that a motion, Ms. Taylor? Oh, yes, I so move. Okay. Move to <coughs> his, his I have license. a motion from Ms. Taylor. I have a second from anyone.
legal question, Ms. Richardson. Would this motion fail with a lack of response or what would be? Robert, Robert's rules of order, but because the board's adopted Robert's right. rules of board order, it's my understanding that you can wait whatever you think is a reasonable time, second, and then you can announce that, you know, unless you have a warning to your board members that you that it would it would fail for lack of a second, but that's your that's the chair's call as to what's the reasonable amount of time and. And what you know, and what kind of announcement you make to the, to the. <clears throat> but it, obviously, yeah. if you get a second, then you've got a, you go to a different sure. different way. But now you have a motion and not a second. We'll give the board two minutes. have a real problem with this reason you pled not guilty I asked your question mr. Hinckley um, again me being a minister and I want to say this to you every time you say that to me I'm a deacon Okay. All right. Well, okay. I'll you so that. I understand the minister part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every time you say that to me, it makes me wonder if you're looking at this board and using the Lord when you say minister. I'm a minister. I understand you're a minister. I'm also a deacon in church. That doesn't excuse the fact that you're a minister. Doesn't excuse what what you've done in the past. And and the, if if the motion. I, I'm almost going to second the motion so this board, because I got a feeling that this board, and this is my personal opinion, would deny you. And I think that if 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 we leave this open like this, you're not you're not formally being denied, except by Robert's rule that says that you cannot that we, uh, if you don't get a second, it is denied. You follow me? You. You need to be in the profession that you've been making a living in, in my opinion, in the last few uh, few years, okay? And I'm sorry, but that's, that's the way I feel because when I look at this and your past, this really bothers me, okay, as, as an individual. And I'm sorry because I'm not supposed to – I'm not the one that's going to judge you, but in a in – a, in a little bit of a way, I'm placing judgment on your past, okay? <clears throat> I think I'm going to make a motion so we can have a roll call vote on this. Okay, I have a motion from Ms. Taylor, a second from Mr. Hinkle. Ms. Mosley, if you'll call the roll, please. Robert Helms? No. Wayne Hinkle? No. David Neal? No. Jane Gray Sow? Recused, please. She's recused. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Starkey? No. Anita Taylor? Yes. Mr. President, we have four no's and one yes. All right. The motion fails.
next on our agenda be a, excuse me. And this may be a legal question, I don't know. <clears throat> the motion to pass obviously failed. Do you want a motion to deny so that it's very clear as to what what the board is doing, or do you want to leave like you just? I want to make a motion to deny. I have a motion for Mr. Hinkle to deny. I have a second. Yes. I have a second from Mr. Neal. Any opposed? Opposed. I have one opposed. Call the roll, please, Ms. Mosley. Robert Helms. Yes. Wayne Hinkle. Yes. David Neal. Yes. Robert Starkey. Yes. Anita Taylor. No. Mr. President, we have five yes to deny and one no. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. <coughs> we have the motion is denied. Thanks. Next will be establishments. First establishment is McGill Click Funerals and Cremations, 1366 Highway 72 North, Loudoun, Tennessee. It's a new establishment. It's owned as a limited liability company. The owner is Carmichael Events, LLC in Loudoun, Tennessee. Present, there's not a representative physically present here today, but uh, Mr. Larry Click, who is one of the partners, owners of this establishment, ask that uh, I present it to the board today in their absence. And board members, Ms. Mosby uh, has for you photographs listed separately there. So the first, first listing is for the application itself, and then the photographs are listed just below that. The, uh, establishment application the property is a former bank building is my understanding and uh, the owners intend to uh, to build on to that bank uh, but they wanted to get a license before they started their building because they've got to go back before the uh, City Council uh, before they do the building and what the local requirements are but there's some additional requirements so they uh, they wanted to get a license I'd ask them if there was a place for a visitation and there in your folders a uh, email that mr. click sent to me on Friday August the 1st saying that they would have seating seating for 30 or so people for a small visitation or viewing at the present time and he says that they have two or three other he owns some other establishments the McGill's own another establishment in that town so he says they have some other area locations that they could do the visitations the embalming would be done by a different establishment um, they're not as it is now they're not situated where they could do that but he asked that it be presented to you today for your consideration. For some reason, I can't, couldn't think. I'm not sure what all was going on, Miss Sal. He just told me yesterday that he would he wouldn't be able. We communicated by email yesterday, and uh, he just told me yesterday that he wasn't wouldn't be able to be here and ask that that I go ahead and present it. Uh, who, who is the manager? Manager is, is listed as Amy M. Millsaps, which in my understanding that's one of the McGill daughters. I think uh, are we still waiting on some approval, did you say? Or is everything's met now that was last time or so 
yeah, well, this is the first time it's been before the board. Uh, I had looked at it to see if I could administratively approve it. It was only a few days before the board meeting, and I thought the safest thing was to bring it before the board and let the board. <clears throat> but they, they meet all the requirements. My knowledge, they've they've made made all the submissions of all the documents that are required. Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion from Mr. Hinkle, a second from Ms. Taylor. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. A next is Springfield Memorial Gardens Funeral Home and Cremation Center at 4005 Memorial Boulevard in Springfield, Tennessee, a new establishment owned by Limited Liability Company, and the owner would be Gall Gallatin Memory Gardens, LLC. Mr. Bill Gregory is here today to speak on behalf of this application. Identify yourself, Mr. Yeah, my, my, name is, my name is Bill Gregory, and um, I'm the owner of the cemetery, and also the, will be the owner of the funeral home there at Springfield. Likewise, with this application, the documents are on one, and then the photos on a separate one there for you. Is this the same? Um, he's before the board, like the previous one. Yes, yes. Because you didn't have time. I wasn't before. No, when I wasn't, this is my first time. No, this is his first, first time, time here. No, the well, this one, this one's a little bit different than the other one. I don't think. Well, Mr. Gregory can tell his story, but what he's told me before, when he is, he has several establishments, in different locations, and this is the way that when he goes to build a new establishment that he has normally in the past, he's come before the board and asked for a approval for an establishment license with the cemetery office that's existing. And then he goes then after that and builds a, a facility. But Mr. Cor Gregory, correct. he can tell the, it more the, accurately. This will be my, my fifth funeral home that I've built. Um, we are building a new funeral home at this location. Uh, but what we've done four times in the past is that we've met the state requirements to fulfill to have an establishment license at um, that location. And then once we've built the new funeral home, then we will transfer the license over to the new funeral home. Uh, but having the establishment license in advance, and again, we do meet um, all the requirements. We uh, uh, are limited though. We can't. We 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 can have a service at, at our chapel mausoleum. We can have a graveside service. Uh, we can have a service at a church, uh, or unfortunately, we can take care of cremation uh, since that's growing and growing. But um, but we have those facilities available for us to use right now. Um, once we have completed the new funeral home, then we'll transfer the license over. It's all on the same grounds there, the cemetery, um, and then we'll have then we'll have a. Um, a different building, which is will be a new building. So you're, you're building a new building now at this site. We, we we are going through the process of getting all everything approved by the state, but we are we're we're hoping to um, to break ground later this month. As far as that's concerned, it's probably going to take us. I don't know. Our timing is not good because of the winter coming up, but it'll probably be eight to, to twelve months before we finish. Have you already got planning commission approval for it? Oh, we do. We do. We, 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 we're, we're right now waiting for our final grading permit to be oh, okay. uh, done yeah. and, and will be started. So yes, sir. You've been through the process yes, and, and you're waiting yes, on sir. grading permits. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Have a motion from Mr. Hinkle, a second from Mr. Helms. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carried. Thank you. 
Gregory had almost all of his documents last month, and there was a meeting that they were going to that night. So that's he's been very patiently waiting now for almost a month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any other establishment? To, that was it, wasn't it? Okay. All right. We'll next turn the meeting back over to Ms. Richardson. The legislature passed Public Chapter 881, which just requires all the regulatory boards to create a report about their apprenticeship programs. So Mr. Gribble and Ms. Mosby and I are working on that report, but I just wanted to make you aware that we're doing that, and that's the public chapter that was passed this year. The report's due by December 31st, 2014. The legislature want, just wants to know for all the boards whether there's an apprenticeship program, if there's not, is one feasible, what it would look like. If there is one, they just want to know like data on it to see if it's effective. We're working on that and we'll have it ready by the deadline, December. There's been a problem in the past a little bit. I like when an apprenticeship or something is corrupted for one reason or another. Military service is one. Uh, that could be, you know, a health issue or nowadays, whatever. Is there any, I just ask that something that that be addressed uh, so we'll have definite guidelines for if there is an interruption of or or is it already in there and I just don't know it I'll have to double check and I can get back to you next month about what the guidelines Right. And it's the same thing, you know, the problem we've had with reci reciprocity on time, time or two. Just we want to be consistent and try to be fair. Everybody on a level plane. I'll look into that and get back to the board next month. While you were in school, sometimes it counted. You could, it was, you had to all be afterward. You remember that, Bob? Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was wishy-washy. And if it just could be something consistent. Some people go to school and work full time at a funeral home. I did. But, oh, it didn't count. And that's all, that's all right. I'm, that's a long time ago, water over the dam. But, oh. We just we just needed a, a consistent. The way it is now, the student uh, can serve the, go to mortuary school and serve their apprenticeship, providing they're working not less than forty hours a week at one establishment. So if they can if they can manage everything and do their work and do their schooling, they can do it during school, during mortuary school. They can do it prior to school or after school. Either either one. Uh, it's, of course, if they get push its degree, then it's a 12-month apprenticeship program. If they get a diploma for the 30 semester heirs at uh, college created by the American Board of Funeral Service Education, then they're required to do it 24 months. All all the apprenticeships are approved for two years, so if they're getting an associate degree, they have some built-in time in case they have a health problem, maternity leave. Uh, some military service course. I think when the military rules come into play that those will specifically address the military. Now where the where sometimes apprentices are required to re-register is when they are getting a diploma and only doing the funeral director part and one of those situations come up because their apprenticeship is just registered for two years and it's they're required to get two years uh, of work in so if they have a sickness that delays them or something, you know, something like that happens, a family situation, 
then sometimes they need to re-register in order to get their time their time in. And another thing is, of course, the board has a rule that the reports, quarterly reports, must be received by the office within 60 days of the end of the quarter. And we still occasionally get reports beyond days, so there's no there's no credit for that. So sometimes then they're required to re-register and do another three months or something because they well, were beyond 60 days. Because that situation has come before us several times. That and it doesn't, and they didn't do it, then it's out of luck. I think one of the, uh, I guess, advantages, like it is, is the board has a little discretion and to listen to the circumstances. And I know we have kind of bypassed, well, I won't say bypassed the law, but we've taken the circumstances in consideration and given these licenses, th you know, when because of sickness, military, and thing, even before we had the military rules. Like if, if you get too specific, then one other thing that came up last year, you know, it, it would tie our hands on making any kind of a compassionate statement, you know. So that's the only thing. But I agree with uh, Miss Sal that, you know, of course, the more guidelines you have, maybe the better off you are. Just, we wanted to make you aware of it, make you aware that the legislature passed this public chapter, and Ms. Richardson wanted to give you some details about what bring that report back to you uh, as to what we find. We don't need any kind of motion to accept that. Do we? Okay. Do we have any new business to come before the board? being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Mr. Hinkle, a motion to adjourn, and a second from Mr. Neal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much.